and that has come out today. Because you've taken your whole day out. God sees that and he'll honor that. Because one of the things that I have discovered about God is that when you invest in what he counts as important, there's a reward that comes with that. It says that he's not unrighteous to forget your labor of love. But he will reward you. Amen. Amen. Okay, so the next section that we're going to do is how to overcome fear. So if we're being honest, how many of you say that fear is one of the things that keep you from sharing your faith? Raise your hand. I still have fear at times. Amen. Yeah. So this says, This is going to help us. Amen. Almost everybody. Almost everyone, absolutely. So fear is one of the greatest hindrances to us sharing our faith. Uh, fear of rejection. Not knowing what to say. What are people going to think? Fear of, not, yeah, fear of not knowing what's going to happen. And some people even have a fear of not knowing enough of the Bible. And a hundred other different fears. So in order for us to be able to witness and share our faith, we need to be able to overcome fear. Amen. So number one, we need to recognize fear for what it is. Fear is a phantom. It's false evidence appearing real. A lot of times the thing that you are most afraid of is not real. And I have a couple of examples down here. Evangelist Levi lets and his wife move from Texas to Florida. And in Texas, Florida. Yeah. And in Texas they have dangerous rattlesnakes. That if they bite you, you, you will die. When he and his wife first moved to Florida, one night he walked out into the garage and he saw part of a snake. And he started to yell for his wife to come so that they could move the car and so that he could catch and kill the snake. Because to, it looked to him to be a poisonous rattlesnake. And so long story short, he caught the snake and he killed it. Uh, and he realized after looking more closely that it wasn't poisonous at all. It looked like the same poisonous snake in Texas. But this type of snake was common in Florida and it was not poisonous. But he said, my heart was beating because I was afraid. 
lakini moyo ulikuwa ukidunda kwa hofu because he thought the snake had enough poison to kill him. Alidani, but after closer inspection, it wasn't poisonous at all. And that's what the devil does to us. He tries to make this thing in our head something to be big and scary but when you step out and you really look at it it's not lakini unaposema nitatenda nitafanya nitatoka unaona kwamba kumbe hakuna gumu but it's false evidence appearing real lakini ni kitu ambacho unadanganywa na kinajithibitisha ya kwamba and then i was i was also talking to a man once that had a dream siku moja niliongea na mtu ambaye alikuwa na ndoto and in a dream he was in a boat going across the water and he said he saw a big wave coming at him and he said he had two choices he could either turn around and go back to shore or he could try to go through the wave and he was believing God for something. And in the dream, he turned around and went back to shore. And he said, when the wave finally got to shore, he realized that it was just a mist. It just looked big and scary. But there was no power behind it. And there are times that God wants us to share our faith with someone. And sometimes it seems like there's an invisible curtain of fear. An invisible wall of fear that tries to keep us back. But if we will take a step and step forward, you realize it has no power. It's just all up here. And so the devil will whisper things into your ears. To try to put doubt in your heart. And see, as a man thinks in his heart, your heart and your brain are connected. If you think the fearful thoughts, it's going to affect your heart. And it's going to keep you from stepping out. But understand it's all a mirage. It's not real. So fear is a temporary emotional stimuli. That the devil uses to keep us in a place of isolation and an activity. When I was little, someone broke into my house. And so for the longest time I was always afraid to stay home by myself. And when I was 19 years old someone broke into my bedroom. He came into my kitchen through my kitchen window at my house. He came into my bedroom and took the blankets off of my bed. And my phone rang, and it scared him. And it woke me up, so when I woke up, there was a man on my floor. And because of that one experience, for a very long time, I couldn't stay home by myself. Until I was in my 30s. And 
anaweza akaingia na kutaka kumbuka. And I remember being at home one night by myself. Na nakumbuka siku moja nilikuwa peke yangu nyumbani. And it sounded like somebody was in my house. Na nikawa kama ninadhani yupo mtu ndani ya nyumba. And in America we have guns. Na unajua Amerika sisi tunapoa na bunduki nyumbani. So I had a gun sitting next to my bed. Na mimi nilikuwa nina bunduki pembeni yake. Pembeni yake kitanda changu. I called my sister. I called my sister on the phone. Kwa hivi akaamua kumpigia dada yake simu. And I said I think there's somebody in my house. Akamwambia ninadhani kuna mtu ameingia ndani. Come get me. Kimbia uje unisaidie. And so she and her husband came to my house to get me. Kwa hivi halaka wakaja yeye na mume wake. Because it sounded like there was somebody in my house. Kwa sababu nilihisi tu yumo kuna mtu ndani. Nilikuwa nasikia sauti ya mtu ndani. And I was sitting there shaking. Na nilikuwa nikitetemeka. Na nilikuwa nimeshika bunduki yangu. Afraid somebody was going to come into my bedroom. Kwamba yeyote atakayejitokeza. And then my sister comes to my house. Na dada yangu na mume wake walipofika ndani. And I'm holding my gun like this. Na wakaniona nimeshika bunduki namna hii. And she calls me and says don't shoot. Akamwambia tafadhali usipige lisani. I'm coming into your house. Akamwambia ninaingia ndani mwako. And then they came and got me. Na kisha wakaja kutia. But the point of the story is this. Lakini ujumbe ni huu. There was no one else in my Kulikuwa house. Kulikuwa kuna mtu yeyote ndani. But because of fear. Lakini kwa sababu ya hofu. I kept hearing things. <laughs> Kwa sababu ya hofu katika mawazo yangu. And I was sure that somebody was in my house. Na kile nilichokuwa nafikiria katika moyo wangu ya kwamba kuna mtu ndani ya nyumba. I would have swore that somebody else was in my house. Na nilijua tu ya kwamba kutakuwa kuna mtu ndani. But nobody was. Lakini hakukuwa na mtu ndani. And that's what the devil does. Na ndivyo shetani anavyofanya kwa. He will make you hear things. Kuna kitu utakisikia ambacho hakipo. Feel things. Utakisikia katika moyo wako lakini hakipo that are not real to keep you in a Lakini, place ni so halisi. of an activity. Na wewe kipo na halisi but see, I was remembering of what happened when I was 19. Mtu na? When somebody did come into my house. Uh -huh. Mwaka, you can repeat that again. I was in, uh, insisting a point here. Okay. What I was saying is he made me remember when I was 19 when somebody did break into my house. Ah, naweza kukumbuka kwamba wakati ule nikiwa na miaka 19 mtu aliingia ndani. So that same emotion when I was 19. Kwa sababu mtu yule aliingia ndani nikiwa na miaka 19 na vile ni hivyo his was the same thing I was feeling when I was in my Ile hali ambayo ilikuwa halisi ndio iliyonitokea tena lakini But there was nothing or no one there. Lakini shetani si kitu. Yeah. But I have good news. We don't have to stay in a place of fear. I can stay by myself now. I have the world all by myself now. Amen. So, number one is recognize for fear what it is. Uh, itambue hofu na uishinde hofu. It's not real. Hofu sio kitu halisi, ni kitu anachokuwekea shetani. Number 2. Jambo la pili. Trust that the Holy Spirit is with you. Amini ya kwamba roho wa Kristo, roho mtakatifu yuko na wewe. In John 14 verses 16 and 17. Katika Yohana sura ya 14 na mstari wa 16. Jesus is talking to his disciples. Yesu anaongea na wale 12. And he says, I'm going to pray and the Father's going to send you a comforter. That he, that he will abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit is with us. And he promises to never leave us. So it's not just you witnessing to the person. But the Holy Spirit is with you. And as you're speaking, he's working with you. And 1 Corinthians 3.9 in John. First Corinthians 3 9. 
Oh, I'm sorry, I already went over that. John 15. No, 1 Corinthians 3, 9. Uh Aha. What what you are reading is not what I said. Okay. Well, I read it from my notes. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 3, 9. It says, it says we are laborers together. Bible says we are laborers together. With God. And that means God and I are partners together. When I go, he goes with me. When I speak, he's with me. He watches over his word. So when you go to witness, know that he's with you. He doesn't say you go. And I stay here. But he says, no, I will go with you. And he goes together. Amen. Hallelujah. Together. The Christian life requires faith. And as we step out in faith, the Holy Ghost is with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Every action of faith includes an element of risk. Kila tendo la imani huleta neema. When God tells us to do something, Mungu anapokuambia ufanye kitu. He doesn't always show us everything. Yeye hata kuonyesha kila kitu. Because he wants us to trust him. Lakini kwa sababu anataka tumwamini. Amen. 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 It's our faith that pleases God. Ni imani yetu inayompendeza Bwana. Number 3. Jambo la tatu. Love trumps fear. Love is greater. Upendo unashinda hofu. It is more powerful and greater than fear. Upendo ndio unaoshinda hofu. In 1 John 4:18. Uh, katika Yohana wa kwanza. It says there is no fear in love. Sura ya 4 mstari wa 18. The perfect love casts out fear. Ah, uh, pendo kamili uondoa hofu. And it says um, he Nine that fears is not perfect in love. Yeye ambaye yuko kwenye hofu basi hayuko katika pendo. When we know the nature of our Father. Na tunajua kuhusu Mungu wetu. And we know that he is good. Tunajua ni mwema. And that he thinks no ill toward us. Na kwamba anatuazia mema. When he directs us to do something. Akitutuma kufanya kitu. We can trust that no matter what happens it's for our good. kuamini ya kwamba kila kitu kitakuwa kizuri. Even if something bad happens. Hata kama kuna kitu kibaya kinatokea. God is big enough to make it work for good. Wakati tunatenda kazi pamoja na so love numbs us to fear. Upendo unashinda hofu. So that fear cannot paralyze us. Upendo unaondoa hofu. In 2 Timothy 1:7. Na katika Timotheo wa pili. It says God's not given us a spirit of fear. Timotheo wa pili moja na msali wa saba. But a power, love, and of a sound mind. Naomba ni somo hapo Timotheo wa pili moja. So God's given us a spirit of power. I'm reading that. Okay. Timothy wa pili. Moja saba. Biblia inasema, maana Mungu hakutupa roho ya uoga, bali ya nguvu na ya upendo na ya moyo wa kiasi. So the, the enemy uses a, a spirit of fear as a weapon. Shetani yeye anatumia hofu kama silaha ya kutozuia. But God has given us a spirit of power. Lakini Bwana ametupa roho yenye nguvu. A spirit of love. Roho wa Kristo, roho wa upendo. And he's given us the mind of Christ. Na yeye ametupa hekima yake. Amen. So when we have the mind of Christ. Tukiwa tuna hekima ya. The Bible says that if we will keep our mind fixed on him. Biblia inasema mawazo yetu yatamwelekea yeye tu. He keeps us in perfect peace. Yeye atatupa 
So when the devil starts to speak to your mind, because that's where he attacks us is the mind. If we will cast down those thoughts, and we take on the mind of Christ, and we keep our mind fixed upon him, Fear won't have access to our thoughts. And it won't have an, an impact in our life. But it's when we forget who our Father is. When we forget His nature. That's when fear starts to find a place in our mind. So we can't allow fear to override our thoughts. Don't allow emotions and lack of love to keep you from sharing the gospel. Love is our motivator. And it's also the power by which we do things. In Matthew 22, 37 through 39, Jesus says, Love the Lord your God with all of your heart. With all your soul. And with all your mind. Amen. Amen. But a lot of us, we love God with a selfish love. We love God for what he can do for us. How many of you in here are married? Raise your hand. Married. How married? Raise your hand. What if in your marriage you're the only one that ever gives love? Hallelujah. Come, come again. If it takes two people in a marriage, right? In a relationship. If only one person is constantly giving love, the marriage is not going to be very successful. It's going to be one-sided. A characteristic of love is that it gives. So you can say that you love someone, but if you're not willing to give, how deep is your love? Because love is a giver. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave. And so a lot of us, we love God for what he can give us. As long as he keeps blessing us, we still go to church. As long as he still keeps blessing us, we remain faithful. But how many of you have seen people when something bad happens in their life? The first thing they do is they blame God. And they quit being faithful. That is example of selfish love. True love. True love for God. Enabled the disciples to be martyred. Love is the strongest power in all of the universe. And when we truly love God, we will be willing to give of ourselves. Amen. Amen. Um, 1 Corinthians 13, speech of love. We're not going to read it. But that's a good reference. So, 
Wakulitu wa kwanza 13 msali wa kwanza hata ule wa 3. We need to be willing to love God and others more than ourselves. Tunatakiwa tumpende Mungu kuliko hata vile tunavyojipenda. Jesus was willing to be hung on a cross naked for us. Yeye Yesu Kristo alikuwa tayari akasubiriwa msalabani akiwa uchi. His love allowed him to to endure the suffering. Ni upendo ambao ulimwezesha yeye akaweza kushinda the cross. Na akaweza kusubishwa na akawa dhabihu kwa ajili yetu. And love will give us the ability to overcome fear. Huu ndio upendo wa Bwana na nguvu tulio nayo. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So number 4. Jambo la 4. Be prepared. Jiweke tayari. Uwe tayari wakati wote. People are often afraid to share their faith because they don't know what to say. Ah, um, wakati mwingine watu wanaogopa kushuhudia kwa sababu hawana kitu cha kusema. So think about what you want to say to someone. Lakini kabla ya kushuhudia basi panga fikiria kile ambacho utanena. One day I was driving in my car. Siku moja nilikuwa naendesha gari. And I was going to the dry cleaner. Na nilikuwa nakwenda mahala wanapofua nguo. To pick up some laundry. Kuchukua baadhi ya nguo. And I began to pray for the person that I was going to meet there. Na wakati ninaendesha gari nilikuwa ninaomba kwa ajili ya mtu ningeenda kukutana naye. And so when I was praying, I was asking God, what do you want me to say? Na wakati naomba, nilikuwa na muliza Yesu. Unataka mimi, ni nene, neno gani? And I felt that I was supposed to share the gospel with him. Na, nika mshirikisha injili ya Yesu Christ. And so when I got there, I started to tell him how Jesus came to the earth and died for our sins. Na nikaanza kumshuhudia na amna Yesu Christ walikuja duniani kuwa mwokozi wa ulimwengu. And I had about a two minute conversation with him. Na, ilinchukua dakika mbili tu nikiongea naye. And I said, have you ever heard that before? Na nikamuliza, "Je, umewahi kusikia neno hili?" And he said, "No." Akasema, "Hapana." And I asked him if he wanted to receive Jesus. And he Na said, yes. See, I think sometimes we think everybody has heard about Jesus. Na, kila, wakati mwingine tunadhani kila mtu anaweza akawa tayari. But this guy had never heard of Jesus. Lakini huyu mtu alikuwa hajawahi kusikia kuhusu Yesu. And when he heard the good, the good news of the gospel. Na aliposikia habari ya njiri. His heart was open and ready. Yeye alipokea katika moyo wake. But see, I had prayed and I prepared what I was going to say. Ni kwa sababu niliomba na nilijiandaa kwa kile ambacho ningeenda kusema. And when I heard what the Holy Spirit said. A Roho Mtakatifu I was able to share what he needed to hear. Amen. So be prepared. Pray and think about what you want to say. You can memorize scriptures about what the Bible says. And in your notes that I gave you, there's different scriptures you can read later. And so when you're prepared, you feel like you're ready. Unapo janda, unaona kama kuna mzigo. And it'll give you confidence. Na uo mzigo unakutakupa tu ujasili. Because one of the worst things is trying to get up and talk about something you have no idea. Uh, kitu ambacho sio kizuri ni kusimama alafu ukaanza kuongea kitu ambacho wewe mwenyewe ukifahamu kwa uhakika. So when you're confident in what and you know what you what you're going to say. Kisoma, neno, na kuwa, na wakika, ya kile it really helps deliver the message. Inakupa nguvu na ujumbe unamfikia yule unayemshuhudia. And when you approach somebody in fear they can pick up Lakini, on that. Lakini unapo ongea na mtu na ukiwa na hofu atajua una hofu. But when you go confident in God's love. Na ukienda katika ujasiri wa Kristo people will see that in you and they want what you want yeah, atajua ujasiri wao nao na amen uhakika ulio nao katika neno so number 5 jambo jingine la tano remember that Jesus is always with you usisahau ya kwamba Yesu yuko pamoja na wewe so before you go out remember he's with you kabla haujatoka hujapiga hatua jua ya kwamba yuko na wewe turn your attention and your affection towards na kama yuko na wewe basi mawazo yako yamwelekee yeye and when you do this don't be afraid to pray for people na hata siku moja unapotoka usione hofu ya kuomba kwa ajili ya watu uponyaji ama jambo lolote see if i go out and i'm witnessing to someone kama nikitoka kwenda kumshuhudia mtu 
and I know that Jesus is the healer and he's with me. Na ninafahamu ya kwamba Yesu yuko pamoja nami. And I'm talking to you about Jesus. Na ninaongea na huyu kuhusu Yesu. And you tell me that you have pain in your shoulder. Na mtu huyu ananiambia ana maumivu ana ugonjwa kwenye mabega yake ama kwenye mwili wake. And if I know that the healer is with me. Lakini nikiwa najua kwamba Yesu mponyaji yuko na mimi. I'll be like, "Oh, Jesus is right here. He can heal you." Yaani wakati anakuambia unamwambia, "Yes." And you, can, and you can pray. Hallelujah. You can lay hands and pray. And trust that God is going to uphold his word. Wakati unaomba unamwambia Yesu. Because God desires for them to know that he's real. Amen and we can pray. Tunaweza tukaomba. You can pray for people to experience his presence. Hallelujah. If you're talking to someone. Unapongea na mtu. You can say can I pray for you that you can experience Jesus. Unaweza kumwambia ninahitaji kuomba kwa ajili yako ili umfahamu huyu Yesu mamlaka yake na nguvu zake. And pray for them Jesus show them that you're real. Na omba ukimwambia Yesu onyesha ukuu wako na nguvu zako katika uponyaji. It's about encounter. Na Bwana atajitokeza kwa nguvu we na we. We're not confident that Jesus is with us. Lakini ukitoka na haujiamini ya kwamba Yesu yuko na wewe. We won't be willing to pray for someone. Mtu atakwambia umuombe kwa ajili ya ugonjwa utajisikia usito kufanya hivyo. And remember it's your faith that pleases God. Lakini usisahau ya kwamba ni imani yako ndio ambayo inavuta nguvu ya Yesu. So if you go to pray for somebody and they don't get healed. Na unapoomba unamwambia mgonjwa na haponi. That's not your responsibility. Sio wajibu wako. Your responsibility is to go in faith. Wewe wajibu wako ni kusimama kwa imani. And to do what the word of God says. Na kusema vile neno la Bwana linatamka. And if nothing happens? Kama hakuna kitu kinachotokea. You go to the next person. Unakwenda kwa mtu mwingine. And the next person. Kwa mtu mwingine. And the next person. Kwa anayefuatia. And the next person. Kwa anayefuatia. You keep doing what you need to do. Wewe endelea unachofanya. And you trust God to do what he does. Na endelea kuamini ya kwamba Yesu atatenda. So don't be afraid to pray for people. Wala usione hofu ya kuombea wagonjwa na wenye shida mbalimbali. Because the devil will say, well, what if you pray and nothing happens? Kwa sababu shetani atakuletea hofu kwamba chochote utakachoomba hakuna kitakachotokea hapa. I don't have to defend God. Mimi sitaki kusema nita mtetea Yesu. I don't have to explain why something didn't happen. Siwezi kumtetea Yesu. God is big enough to defend himself. Yeye mwenyewe anajitetea. My responsibility is to pray. Yeye mwenyewe anasimama. My responsibility is to pray. Mimi ni kwenda na kuomba kwa neno lake. It's his job to do it. Yeye atafanya. Amen. 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 So I just go and I do what I can do. Ninachotakiwa ni kutoka kushuhudia kufanya maombi. And it's up to God to do the rest. Yeye atafanya. I don't have to answer for that part. Wala mimi siwezi sihitaji When I stand before Jesus, he's not going to say, "Why didn't you heal that person?" Wala yeye hata kuuliza kwa nini Yohana hukumponya yule mtu. But he will say, "Why didn't you tell them about me?" Ata kuuliza kwa nini hukumwambia kuhusu abali zangu yesu. See a secret. When we go before God, we will not only give an account for the things that we've done. Atutatoa hesabu tu kwa mambo tuliyoyafanya. But we will give an account for the things that we did not do. Lakini tutatoa hesabu kwa yale ambayo hatukuyafanya. Yale siku ya hukumu yale tuliyoyafanya tunatoa hesabu. Ambayo hatukuyafanya tunatoa hesabu. When we look at the ruler that gave his servants talents. Na tunapoona watumishi. He gave the one five talents. Ah, oh Biblia inasema kuhusu habari ya talanta. He gave the one two talents. Talanta tano mwingine talanta mbili. And the one one talent. Na mwingine talanta moja. And the five went before his master. Lakini yule wa tano And he said this is what I did. Akasema tano what you gave me. And then the master was like Good job. Here's some more. Na nipo kila yule akasema kazi njema. He was rewarded for what he did. Kwa sababu alikuwa anatoa hesabu ya kitu alichokifanya. The servant with two talents said this is what I did. Lakini yule wa talent mbili akasema hiki ndicho alichokifanya. Nyingine mbili hizi hapa. The master said very good. Here's reward. Na bwana wake akasema mtumwa mwema mtumishi mwema. The one with one talent. Lakini yule aliyepewa moja. Said I didn't do anything. Akasema sikufanya kitu chochote. Because I was afraid. Kwa sababu nilikuwa na hofu. I was afraid. I was afraid. 
and the, was the was the master happy with the one that was afraid? No, he took what he had. And then he cast him out. See, he wasn't held accountable for the five talents. He wasn't held accountable for the two talents. But he was held accountable for the one that he was given. And because he did not do something, he was cast out. We, each one of us will be held accountable for what we've been given. We will be rewarded for what we've done. And we risk losing for what we did not do. So we want to make sure that when we stand before Jesus, that we stand there saying, this is what I did. And the beautiful thing is that the people that use their talents, there was always increase. increase. So even if you put your hand to something and you don't think it's good, you'll be rewarded for doing something. Amen. 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 So let's do something. Number six. We only have one life to live for oh, Jesus. We have one life. Remember that you're living for eternity. This entire life that we live comes down to one moment. It's when we stand before him. And he says, well done. Good and faithful servant. Good and faithful servant, enter in. Amen. Amen. We'll give it, one day we'll stand before God and give him an account. So don't bury your talents because of fear. You don't want to stand before him ashamed. Because you, because you did not use the talents that and you don't want to stand before him with regret. Because when you stand before him, you stand before him naked and by yourself. And he's not going to listen to excuses. Well, I didn't do this because I was afraid. Well, I didn't do this because I didn't think you would be there. There's going to be no excuses. The only thing that's going to be there is you and what you did. So we want to make sure that we don't allow other people to keep us from using our talents. And we don't want to allow a defeated devil to rob us. No. Usimuhusu shetani akuzuye. Kuitendea kazi huduma karama na kipawa ulichokuwa. Or to stop us or to stop us. Because my Bible says that the gates of hell will not prevail. My Bible says that he has given me all power and authority in the name of Jesus and that I can do all things through Christ. That means through Christ I can share my faith. Through Christ I can speak to people. Through Christ I can share the gospel. Through Christ I can evangelize 
stabilize my city and my town. Ya Yesu Kristo wovu unaondolewa. Through Christ I can snatch people out of hell. Ah, kwa nguvu ya jina la Yesu watu watatoka kwenye hukumu. And bring them into the kingdom of God. Na kuwaleta katika neema ya ufalme wa Mungu. And if Jesus is for me. Na kama Yesu yuko pande wangu, kama yuko na mimi. Who can stand against me? Nani anaweza kuwa kinyume nami? Listen, if you think the devil is nani greater than you. Nani kukuzuia? If you think the devil is greater than you. Ukidhani kwamba shetani anaweza kuzuia. You're believing a lie. Bas ujue una hofu na unaamini kitu ambacho ni uongo. That is a lie. Huo ni uongo. You are seated in heavenly places with Christ. Sikia umeketishwa katika ulimwengu wa roho na Bwana. Alipoketi umeketi naye. You are the body of Christ. Wewe ni mwili wa Kristo. And Jesus says not bow to any devil. Na Yesu Kristo ana nguvu na mamlaka juu. And neither should we. Neither should we. Na yeye yuko tayari kwa nawe katika ushuhudi wake. So don't believe the lie of fear. Kwa hivi usi ukubali uongo wa hofu. Know that you've been given all power and all authority. And Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. kwake hallelujah. Amemaliza kwa leo. Amina. Amina.